After a lifetime of researching the dynamic and enigmatic world of light entertainment, I've decided to ditch my notebook and meet the people who inspire me. What makes them the people they are? How do they feel about the show business landscape in which they find themselves? And in a world where anyone can be a star, is there still a need for performers who have universal appeal? Come with me on a journey of discovery as I get a unique insight into Britain's favourite stars with a little help from my glamorous assistants. Yeah, well, I say glamorous, more like hazardous. And of course, we'll have a bit of fun along the way. Following a successful string of cameos in cult comedy of the 80s and 90s, television actor Paul Bradley became a household name in 1992 when he was cast as the lovable oaf Nigel Bates in the heavyweight BBC serial drama EastEnders. In his six years on the square, Nigel tackled everything from the death of his wife Debbie in a hit-and-run accident to the unlikely rapport with the Albert Square legend Doc Cotton. Leaving Walford in 1998, Paul returned to serial drama, playing Dr Elliot Hope in the long-running medical drama Holby City for over a decade. I caught up with the celebrated actor whilst his new play Octopus Soup tours nationwide to talk television, theatre and charity work. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Paul Bradley. Uh, we'll get on to the major themes of your career in a moment, but I suppose before you secured the role in EastEnders, you were a supporting actor, sort of jobbing around and getting small cameos on shows like The Young Ones, the Bill and Murder Most Horrid. As, a, yeah. as an actor, in what way did this offer you a grounding in understanding working in television drama? Um, before that, I'd done quite a lot of theatre. I'd been in rep, and um, so I was used to, you, you know, the demands of theatre, really. Uh, and um, I'd also done quite a bit of, I'd, I had my own children's TV program. Um, I worked a bit up in Granada doing um, uh, sort of light entertainment shows really. So um, I, I, and it was a bit funny with the young ones because I knew um, I was at university with Rick and Aid and um, in fact I'm still mates with uh, with Aid and we meet up regularly and yeah. get drunk. And um, so, um, so the, 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 the um, the thing about um, uh, uh, Holby City and EastEnders is that um, it's a very quick turnover, so nothing really prepares you for it. Uh, uh, you know, when you even when you're playing a small part on telly, you, you, you get you get a, a decent amount of time and and sometimes a couple of cracks at it. You know, um, but when you come to EastEnders, it's sort of um, it's very wham bam, you know. They 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 they, they, they um uh they, you do a read through a quick rehearsal and then and then you um you shoot it, you know. So if you're going to do that long term, you have to get used to being able to do, learn quickly and being able to do things quickly. Um, I, I, I remember my first day. Um, uh, um, EastEnders wasn't too bad because when I first started, we used to rehearse. Yeah. Um, but then we went; um, uh, it went twice a week, um, and eventually three times a week. Um, uh, and they dropped rehearsing, so you just sort of um, rehearse beforehand in front of the camera, and then then they shot it. Um, so, but I remember uh, um, starting in Holby and. Um, seeing Amanda Mealing and everyone was very friendly you know they're, they're, they're really friendly in makeup and, you know they try and make you feel at home and then when they get on set something weird happens they, they um it's sort of like transformers you know they suddenly click into the into um uh, doing it you know and I, I found that quite um difficult to to um to sort of uh, do really yeah Okay, so you spoke about EastEnders there. Um, that 1992, is that right, when you were cast as Nigel Bates? That's right, yes. Yeah. I was supposed to be, uh, I, was, uh, I was in for three episodes. And um, I, I remember um, in those days you could buy your costume. And actually there was a quite nice suit that I wore in the three episodes. So I said to the costume uh, chap, can I, can I buy the suit? And he said, "No, you, you're coming back." And um, 
so he knew before I knew, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, and, and um, I mean, unless unless you're very unless you're very good or very lucky as an actor, it's very difficult to um, plan a career. I don't think you can plan a career at all. Um, all your only strength as an actor, I think, is to be able to, is to say no. Oh, you say no. That's that's not what I want to do. Um, so it, it was funny because I started off in theatre doing and, and doing, you know, after a few years doing lead parts in in um, uh, provincial theatres, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, making them yeah employed, um, and and you sort of see well that's how my career is going to go, and I never looked down. I had a great time in East Enders and Holby. Um, some people are snobby about um, continuing dramas. I'm, I'm not. Um, but um, I never thought that's what I'd be known for. <laughs> yeah. so what were your first impressions then of the character of Nigel Bates? Um, well, it, 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 the beauty of it was that um, he had... Um, I got a lot of laughs. And there, there were a couple of writers, um, Tony Jordan being one of them, yep. who sort of latched onto the character and went, because I had these sort of like big, uh, you know, uh, 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 funny ties and sort of like loud shirts. Yep. Um, and it's quite difficult because you, you sort of like don't really know what your character is about. But And sometimes things like costume or where where you live and things like that can help you find the character. And I just, you know, he's got to be, a, a, a little bit um, a, a chirpy and over the top um, with the costumes that he's wearing, and um, they, they kept writing me. And you know, EastEnders can be be miserable sometimes, um, so it was great to get the um, uh, uh, you know a lot of the um, the fun lines in it. You know, yeah. and then of course they try they 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 they, they have a tendency to to miserableize everything. And um, so uh, they they knocked my wife over, and um, well, she wanted to leave, and uh, so she got knocked down, and um, I was miserable for nine months. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> obviously that was quite. That's one of those things, isn't it, where um, it tackles a sort of raw human story. How how do you feel working on on things like that sort of this before? I suppose the Holby City. I I always feel because so many people watch it that you you have a responsibility to be as truthful. Uh, I mean, I always think you know the watchwords of acting for me are, are to be truthful and entertaining. Um, yeah. And um, I, I I always thought that um, you know you have a responsibility. Even if it's just uh, you, you know to represent what your character is going through, because people in uh, watching are, are going through it, you know, and and it's got to ring true to them. So you know you're grieving, and um, uh, I, I then got into a custody battle to uh, um, uh, with the, the um, daughter-in-law, yeah. um, and um, yeah, I always. I, I, and, and like in Holby, if if you have any, um, you, you're often dealing with with medical things that um, people are going through. So you have to be, uh, you know, as truthful as you can. Yeah. And they're the best judges, the people who are who are going who who are going through it, and they're the ones you have to convince. Yeah. And then in 1998, which is just a, a couple of years later. Nigel sort of departed EastEnders and left the Square. How, what, yeah. how did you feel about that? How was the, that in terms of because then in 1998 you first started Holby City, didn't you? Uh, it wasn't that. There was about five years between okay. uh, one and the other. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I think it was. Uh, I think it was 2000 that I. Uh, um, Oh, really? I'm, not very, good at, no, I'm no. not very good at the dates. I was there for 10 years and I left four years ago. Um, but yes. um, okay. it, it, was my, it was my decision to leave EastEnders. And it, it was just because 
if you have any ambition as an actor, um, which I do still have, um, you know, to do interesting work and, and um, uh, to challenge yourself, really, uh, uh, um, I just thought um, I, I, I didn't want... He played Nigel, written on his tombstone, written on my tombstone, you know. Yeah. I, I wanted to... Because part of the fun of acting is doing different characters. Yeah. And it takes a... You have to make an accommodation with yourself and, and your life uh, uh, um, if you stay in a in a soap. I mean, I I, I don't blame anyone who, who stays. You know, and uh, there are lots of fine actors who 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 are in uh, who are in them. Um, but it, it wasn't for me, and, and I, I sort of thought, oh, you know, I'd really like to do something else. So I did quite a bit of theatre when I left. Uh, I mean, I got I got offered um, some tellies and I was always sort of like looking for a sitcom um, but I got for the stuff that was just was just Nigel in a, in a different outfit yeah. you know and I sort of thought well I might as well have stayed if I'm doing the same character yeah. so um, so I, I, I moved on I did some um, did some really nice theatre I did um, uh, Noises Off which toured and then was in the West End um, I did uh, The Pianist with um Roman Polanski. Um, so I, I was doing interesting stuff, and that, that's what I've tried, you know. And, and sometimes it doesn't matter where it is. Like uh, I hadn't been long out of um, Holby when somebody sent me a script. It was a Victorian melodrama, um, but it was a fantastic play and a fantastic part. But it was in a in, in a small fringe theatre, you know. Yeah. Um, but for me, that it didn't matter because I, 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 I sort of thought I don't want anyone else to play that part. I want that part, you know. Mm. So, um, and um, it, you know, you you make decisions about what work you, well, <laughs> you have to be offered it for a start. And um, I think because I had done so much theatre before, quite a few directors knew me and offered me stuff and I, I did um, a couple of years ago uh, we're in Eastbourne at the moment the touring but a couple of years ago we toured with um, a play called Dead Sheep where I played um, Jeffrey Howe yeah. and, um, and again I read the script and I thought this is fantastic you know and um, and a challenge um, and then now I'm playing a, a, um, uh, a, a, a I'm doing a farce with um, uh, um, Nick um because oh, my brain's gone this early in the morning. And Nick <laughs> Hancock, <laughs> I just see him every day. Yeah. Um, Nick Hancock in uh, a play called Octopus Soup, and it's a new play. Um, so I mean, I, I, I like I like doing new stuff because um, you know it, 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 you're there right at the beginning, and you know, like over Christmas, I did um, a very 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 dark matter, um, uh, which was. Um, Martin McDonagh's um, new play at the, yes. the bridge, and um, that was amazing. It was very, you know, uh, and that was a real challenge because it was. Although I had a very small part, I was understudying Jim Broadbent, and I got um, we did an understudy run, and <laughs> it was a very big part. So it was a great thing to the challenge to learn it, you know, and do my own yes. performance. Um, so you so sort of. Yeah, first just going to ask, sort of, so then for you as, uh, as, a, as an actor, through the different, so you've got the sort of theatre, which, like you say, a little bit longer, a bit more rehearsed, you've got the one-hour dramas that you've done, and, and then the sort of traditional 30-minute soap episode. Yeah. So how, how, so what do you prefer? How does that uh, like work for you as an actor? You know, how does that impact like your the dramatic storytelling, I suppose, in, in your opinion? Um, you... If, when you're in a play, of course you do it every night and, and matinees, and you go from A to B or A to Z. Yeah. Um, so and you're a lot more in control in uh, in television. Uh, you can do really good stuff and it will get cut. Um, so you're slightly out of control, um, and and even the images, you know, you, you you the camera may not be on you when you're when you're doing good stuff and. Well, I used to find that sometimes you, you, you know, because you can't be uh, 
on the ball the whole time. Sometimes you go, oh my God, you know, I wish we could do that another five times. I just didn't crack it. But mm-hmm. then you have to say to yourself, well, there'll be another nice seed down the road. So I'll let that go. And um, it, it, it sort of, it, you you let things go, you know. And, and, and so I think that's one of the things why I left um, uh, EastEnders as well, is that the tighter in time is. Because I think, you know, basically most actors, most good actors are just good actors. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, on, on a film, you have a lot more time to do it. And um, on on soaps you don't. You've got very short, so you have to make quick decisions. Make sure you're you're being um, uh, imaginative and uh, um, being creative. Um, and when that stops, I mean, I mean, it, it it gets frustrating sometimes when you don't have enough time to do something as well as you'd want to. Yeah. And then if you have enough of those, you 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 go well. Uh, maybe it's time for me to do stuff that um, I get a bit more time with. Yeah. Um, in terms of the time aspect, though, do you think that, um, obviously, for example, your character Elliot in, in Holby City, that was a, a character that you were able to develop over the 10 years that you were there. Do, do you think yeah. that sort of is maybe one of the, the positives as opposed to the theatre side of things, I suppose, where um, you get such a long time to develop a character Maybe. Yeah, it, it, it's a completely different discipline. Um, you've got to get in the zone a lot quicker. Uh, you've got to be right on it. Uh, it you've got to learn it back to front. Uh, the, 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 the late scripts are the worst scripts. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, the scripts can vary in quality. Um, and if it's a bad script, it takes longer to learn because you sort of don't have a part of you that doesn't want to say it. Um, yeah. But you haven't got the time to, or, or the luxury to say I don't want to do that. Um, I loved uh, I, I loved Holby. I got I got uh, and it was nice playing because you know Nigel was was was, was great, but he was um, uh, he, 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 you know a bit dippy and, and and it was nice to play an intelligent character. You know, yeah. My dad was a, jo- a doctor. He was a GP, so um, it was. Uh, uh, um, I think he would have been pleased that one of his. Um, children had become a doctor yeah um, but yeah. um yeah and also it's it's new every every episode you come in that you're working with different actors um uh, and um that variety uh can really keep you uh i mean to me 10 years passed in like five minutes i mean time travels quicker when you get older anyway but if you're having fun or you're being stimulated and um getting scripts that are you know that that, that, that are good and, and and again you know i was able to uh something i've always wanted to do you know i was able to uh, uh, be humorous you know that they yeah. they wrote funny stuff for me and that as well you know yeah okay so we mentioned a little bit um, as well then about uh, octopus soup a little bit before. What yeah. you, just um, might be a good opportunity to, I suppose, to tell us a little bit about what it's about and um, what we can expect. Well, it's it's a it's a new play, which is always exciting, and it's a farce, um, which are which are difficult, um, both to write and perform, um, and I think it, it's. Um, you know, audiences really um, follow. Uh, it, it's a sort of. It's a. It's not a complicated story. Uh, farces often are, but but uh, but it, it's uh, basically about this chap who, who has a um, Seymour, who has a uh, a vision of how the um, problems, financial problems of the world, can be settled, and he's got he's got this um, uh, pitch that he he wants to pitch to a CEO of a. Um, insurance company and I come in and while he was doing the pitch I, I burgle him and tie him to a chair and um, I then convince him uh, uh, to um, join with me and um, form a sort of company where um, 
I burgle places, and they, then they, then he uh, gets the insurance people to uh, not insure those places because they'll make a loss on it. And then I, 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 I protect other places, and nobody burgles there, so he can they can take the profits from that. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of a, a, a nicely ridiculous idea, um, which sort of spirals out of control. And um, um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good fun to do. Yeah, excellent. Um, we would like to ask you about something a little bit different, away from your acting. Um, we would like to talk about comic relief um, and oh, right, the, yeah. and the, uh, the what you did with was it Fergal King um, for yeah, was yeah. It Dead Serious? Um, yes, you yeah. met quite a remarkable lady called Esther on your travels. We'd, we'd yeah, love yeah. to just hear from you a little bit about that, really, and. Um, you know how how it was doing something like that. Well, it 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 blew me away really. It, it, it totally um, not totally, but it but it changed my life in a. Um, I, I'd never come across. Uh, I went to Rwanda, um, which had suffered um, a genocide, and um, the majority of the Tutsi men had been um, killed um, and a lot of the Tutsi women had been raped and I met um, the survivors and um, uh, we were taken around by a woman who, who um, she's an absolutely amazing woman. I mean, she speaks three or four languages uh, fluently um, and so she was our guide and translator there. And I've never met somebody with uh, um, such generosity of spirit, I and mean, a real absolute generosity of spirit, to the extent that um, um, we were being driven around by a man who was obviously a Hutu, and our, uh, all Hutus at the time would have been involved in the genocide, and um, it was very obvious that he was he was a Hutu, and um, Somebody, uh, uh, he, when we went in, we went in for a meal um, into a, a Tootsie woman's uh, uh, hut. And Esther went out and, and said, no, you've got to come in and eat with us. And she had this extraordinary, um, because she'd lost most of her family in, in, in awful circumstances. And uh, she heard her husband being shot um, he was caught at a roadblock um, so that he didn't run away. They cut his hamstrings um, and he lay there bleeding. And then uh, later uh, he was shot. Um, she managed to stay in this hotel, uh, Emile Colline, which was sort of like the eye of the storm, but, but it was a safe place. And, yeah. um, and she survived. Um, and I'm still in touch with her and I'm, I'm still a patron of the, Survivors Fund, which is the Rwandan um, survivors charity in England, and um, it, it was funny this year because I, I love David Lammy. I think I think he's a fantastic MP, and I agree with so much that he says. I just think the timing of his remarks about comic relief were really unfortunate because he could have said them after um, comic relief, and you know, um, down. And I think. Because he's quite influential, I think people went, oh, right, yes, I agree, I'm not going to give to comic relief. Um, I thought that was a shame, because, uh, I mean, every year I try and do something, and, um, um, yeah, I thought it was a shame. Yeah. Um, and, and I suppose for you, someone who's used your your fame, I suppose, to, to highlight those pressing issues, um, it, it maybe is difficult to see somebody else discrediting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a funny thing because it's a, it, it, it it was a mixed, um, <laughs> you know, it's quite flattering to us to, to to do something for comic relief. Uh, actually, I did I did a um, a, uh, a, um, a sketch for them years ago. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Gladiators program, but I was yeah. on the Gladiators. Uh, it was sort of a piss take of that. Um, yeah. So I've done something with them before, and the. Um, the thing that I was going into was very much a woman's um, 
area because uh, uh, the the um, you know, the place that Esther uh, ran w was um, for women survivors, um, and I think they'd asked three or four women if they would do it, and uh, they got turned down. And it was very weird because I, I, um, I was a great fan of Fergal Keynes, and then I read his. I, I I started reading his book about um, Rwanda, and then uh, in sort of one of these weird coincidences, that same day, Comet Relief phoned me up and asked me if, if I'd come in and, and have a chat. Um, but it it it, it did. Bec I, I became I suppose it, I did become a little bit obsessed with it because um, I suppose I was so moved by it. And and I felt that um, not just to sort of turn up as a, as a face, but I think I've read every book about Rwanda. I've I've been back twice, um, and it became a sort of project because yeah. it, 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 I, I, it it upset me so much that I needed to do something to redress that balance in me. Um, uh, 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 and you know, I have spoken at, at places. I do a very good Rwanda speech um, um, because it, it's from the heart. Yeah. Um, because through being people like um, Esther, um, so I try to do as much as I can, really. Now, yeah. So then, um, we'd like to know, sort of looking back over your whole career, what would you say your proudest achievement is? Oh wow. Um, do you know, and this is really silly, but but I did a. Um, uh, my parents were Irish, and I I I, I still support Ireland and stuff. And actually, uh, uh, we go to Ireland a lot. Um, I did a program in Irish in Northern Ireland <laughs> many years ago, right. a sitcom called See You Burn, and it was so wacky uh, uh, that um, that um, yeah, I, I'm sort of quite proud of that, but. The thing about doing a continuing drama is that you you sort of it, it, you get so many you get highlights and then you sort of like do stuff where you're just sort of going taking temperatures and things like that and yeah. um, so there aren't that many highlights. I love doing noises off because that, that, um, it's a fantastic play. Um, yeah. And the pianist I, I thought was uh, a brilliant film, brilliant, brilliant film, and. Um, it was great being part of that. So I've been very lucky, really. I've had, 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 had you know, stuff that, um, you know, it's just been good stuff, really. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> what's what's next for Paul Bradley? I've no idea. That's no. the awful thing about being <laughs> not being in <laughs> um, a long-running show is I've no idea. And, and the downside of that is that you can't really plan your life. You know, I can't say... Because um, I'd quite like to go to the um, the World Cup and uh, rugby World Cup in Japan, but um, I ain't got the dos. Um, <laughs> so uh, um, so I'm, I, I wait really, you know, and, and see what happens. But um, I'm sort of um, you've got to keep optimistic, even though the legs stop working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A big thank you to our guest for being the subject of another Beyond the Title interview. If you like this, why not browse the website and see if there's anything else that takes your fancy. Don't forget to like our Facebook page to receive updates of forthcoming interviews and to see more information about me and what I do. Thanks again and hopefully see you next time for another Beyond the Title interview.